And the Lord appeared unto him, this is Abraham. Abraham's in his tent. That's how Abraham lived. Abraham was not a vagrant, but Abraham was a wanderer. And Abraham did not know where the Lord wanted him to end up as far as a long-term destination. But Abraham was following the Lord by faith. Abraham's life is a beautiful picture of the life of a believer. We are born to wander. We are not here as permanent residents. The Bible tells us about Abraham that he was looking for a city uh, whose builder and whose ruler or maker is God. And that's Abraham, a life of faith. Simply following the Lord by faith, uh, step by step as the Lord moved Abraham, Abraham moved. The Lord was moving Abraham at his command and Abraham was simply following. And that's why Abraham is known as in the scripture, the father of the faithful, because Abraham lived a life of faith. And that's the life that we're supposed to live. And so Abraham lived in a tent, not because he was a vagrant, not because he was a vagabond, but because he was a wanderer. That's what he was supposed to do. So here's Abraham, the Bible says, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. As he sat by the tent door in the heat of the day. I've observed this many times growing up in Mexico. In the middle of the day, things just get dead. Uh, when I traveled in September, there were several days where it was just extremely hot. In the middle of the day, it kind of reminded me uh, that I'm thankful that the Lord has placed me where we live. In the middle of the day, especially the second and the last day that I was in Veracruz, it was over 100 degrees. It was probably about 105, and the heat just coming up from the sidewalk. You could literally feel it on your feet coming up. I talked to one of the men as I was sitting on the bus. I was walking back to my room. I was going to, I was pretty ambitious. I thought, I'm going to walk. It's about three miles from the restaurant where my dad used to eat. I'll walk from there back to my motel. I got about halfway, and I chickened out and took a bus, okay? So I told him, I said, man, it's just hot. And the man says, yeah, he says, it's a heat, it's a heat, he called it abrazadera. It just wraps its arms around you. And that's what it felt like, just a smothering, sweltering heat. So in climates like that, people are not out and about in the middle of the day, the heat of the day. And Abraham, very similar to the custom, he's just sitting in his tent, looking out. He sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. Doesn't mean don't die. He's saying, don't go to the next place. He's asking him, stop, and he's making a move toward him that's cordial. And you know, the Bible tells us as believers that we're supposed to be given to hospitality. And the Lord's been convicting me about that. We ought to think about that. Uh, United States, in the modern age we live in, is probably one of the most inhospitable countries. When we went to Ireland, I was really impressed by how in other places, other countries and cultures are much more warm and welcoming than we are. And the Lord convicted me about that. We need to be hospitable. So he's saying, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched. Read the next four words. And wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. We're going to have a word of prayer and I want to talk to you just for a few minutes. I want to show you something. It's not something that we do on a regular basis. In some churches, they do it a lot. And uh, do it uh, in, in several different services. Uh, we don't do that. I'm, I'm not, not saying that I'm opposed to it. But I just want us to understand this scripture passage because it's the same thing that Jesus Christ did with the disciples. And I want us to understand what it means, why it was put into place, and really what the symbol of it means so that we can see it visibly and understand it. So we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we'll take a look at it. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for its truths. 
I pray that our minds and our hearts be attentive to your word. Help us to see it. Help us to understand it. And I pray, Lord, that you would grant us the same humility that you had when you washed the disciples' feet. We ask this thing in your name and for your sake, and we'll praise you for it. Amen. So here we have Abraham. He wants to be welcoming, and he wants to receive guests. The day that they lived, as best as we know, they did not wear the kind of shoes that we wear, okay? Something like this would just be too hot. How many have ever walked on really, really hot sand? Anybody done that? How many have ever walked on sand that was so hot it literally burnt your feet? Anybody have that happen? Uh, I noticed that in these real hot climates, people don't go barefoot. When I was growing up, there was a street, three streets down from where I lived. I don't know how they did the pavement job. I don't think they did a good job on it, but I used to skateboard a lot. Surprise, Brianne. I used to skateboard. And there's something about that street, the pavement wasn't so good, because when it got really hot, the pavement, the asphalt, got gooey. And literally, I could not skateboard on it because it was just that gooey. There were times, I've heard the expression, you could fry an egg on the sidewalk. There were times that I am sure where I lived, you could fry an egg on the sidewalk. And uh, the Lundines lived down in Texas for a while, and I am sure that there were times where they lived in Texas that you could fry an egg on the sidewalk. So it was very hot. And the custom was that people wore some kind of open sandal, open shoe, open-toed shoe uh, that allowed for some air circulation. But the problem with that is, as you were walking around, your feet not only would get hot, but your feet would also get dusty and your feet would get really dirty. How many of you know that when you take sandals off and there's any kind of dirt or sand around, you take it off and you look at the bottom of your feet and you go, ah! Because there's that paste. You know what I'm talking about? That little bit of sweat paste that gets built up with whatever mud or dirt accumulates under there. And it just looks terrible. The sandal looks terrible. The feet look terrible. And that's what happens when you walk with some kind of open-toed shoe. As a way of being hospitable to the guest. And many times as a way of keeping the house a little cleaner. They would meet a guest at the door, they would have a pitcher of water, and they would have a basin. When we say a basin, we just mean like a small tub. And they would use the water out of the pitcher, and they would use the little tub to catch the water. And they would literally wash off the dirt from somebody's feet. It did two things. Not only did it clean the feet that looked pretty bad, but it also was very refreshing. Maybe you've done this. I've done it. But here in Roger City, on the edge of the lake, the water never really gets that warm. And when it's super hot out, and you get your feet wet in that cold water, it feels good. And there's something refreshing. It was a way of refreshing the guests and a way of being welcoming and inviting to them. Let's keep that in mind as we look to the scripture again. Ready? Ready? And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under a tree. You see that? Here Abraham is showing them that he is going to be welcoming to them and he is going to wash their feet. So let's see what happened. The Bible tells us that they stayed and he did in fact do that. And the Bible tells us that Abraham entertained this, these guests. He made them a meal 
And that was all part of the hospitality that went with receiving guests. Now I want you to see something else in the book of 2 Samuel chapter number 11. I want you to see that this was the custom way back in the days of Abraham, long before there was uh, a really a nation of Israel. But I want you to see that this was a custom. If we were to fast forward uh, more than a thousand years, we're going to see that this is still in place. We're in 2 Samuel chapter number 11. Now the, the context of this verse is a negative one because here David is being deceptive to his neighbor and he has some wrong purposes that he's trying to accomplish, but that's not what I want to focus on. I want you to notice what he tells his neighbor Uriah. So the Bible tells us in 2 Samuel chapter number 11, he talks to Uriah. 2 Samuel 11 and verse number 8. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house. Read the next four words. Ready? Nice and loud. And wash thy feet. What he was telling him is, go home, refresh yourself. You ever hear somebody, I need to go wash up. You ever hear somebody say that? They might need to splash a little water on their face and rinse their hands off or whatever. But really that is what is being told there. He's saying, go home, take refreshment, go into your house and relax, enjoy yourself. That's the same thing that he's telling them here. But this is many years after it happened with Abraham. I want you to see a New Testament instance of it. So we're going to go to the book of Luke, chapter number 7. The book of Luke, chapter number 7. How many of you do not like to have your feet touched? Raise your hand. I mean, you're just serious. It's just not, you don't want somebody touching your feet, okay? How many of you don't mind having your feet touched? How many of you would not like a stranger to touch your feet? Raise your hand. Okay, all right. I want you, I want you to think about the biblical context of what's happening here. Because in Bible times, if you were to go to somebody's house, it didn't matter if you knew them very well or not, and likely it would not be the Lord of the house or the person you were going to go see that would wash your feet, it'd probably be somebody that worked for them. So it'd probably definitely be a stranger. So think about that. The book of Luke, chapter number seven. How many of you are glad you don't have to do hospitality by washing people's feet that come to your house? Hallelujah. The book of Luke, chapter number seven and verse number 38, the Bible says this. And stood at his feet behind him weeping. Now here's a lady who is going to show something very interesting. And the person, him here, is Jesus. And stood at his feet behind him weeping. And began to wash his feet with tears. Now I don't know much about this lady. And I don't know much about the size of Jesus' feet. But there has to be a lot of tears to wash feet, I would have to think. And began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. We're going to understand that not only was this a show of affection toward the Lord Jesus, obviously she kissed the Lord Jesus' feet. How many of you would kiss the Lord Jesus' feet? I think you would, okay? So I don't want you to think it's strange. I think she uh, really did genuinely love the Lord Jesus. How many of you would kiss anybody else's feet? Okay, not me. How many of you have ever kissed a child's feet? Okay, and that's a, that's a special and it's a beautiful thing. It's not weird, okay? 
So here we have a lady in a show of humility and service to the Lord. It's more than just being welcoming. It's more than just refreshing the Lord's feet. But I want you to see that this is a sign of affection that she's bestowing on Jesus. And it's a sign of humility. It's a sign of humility. Say that word with me. Humility. To wash somebody else's feet. Remember I said that generally it was not the person, the lord of the house, the person who owned the house. That normally is not the person who's doing the feet washing. Normally it's somebody who's a paid servant. Somebody who is made to do something that's kind of undesirable. But I want you to see Jesus and his example. That's in the book of John, chapter number 13. Are you ready? The book of John, chapter number 13. This is the last text that we'll look at. Brother Drew, I'm going to have you come up here. Go ahead. If you'll come up here and put that chair right up here where everybody can see it. Brother Drew's going to take his shoes and socks off. And uh, I have some... I have some stuff. <laughs> he thinks it's feet wash, but it's cayenne pepper. Uh, the book of John, chapter number 13. And verse number four. Are you ready? Would you read with me? We're going to read down to verse number 8. We're going to the book of John, chapter 13. We're reading in verse number 4 down to verse number 8. If you'll read aloud with me. And he riseth from supper, laid aside his garments, and he took a towel and girded himself. Now this is a perfect example because most of the time they wore an outer garment. Jesus did not take all of his clothes off. That's not what it's saying. But he had an outer garment. And he's taking that off, just as, in this case, I would take my coat off. And then the Bible says that Jesus girded himself. Let's keep reading, and we'll read to the end. I won't uh, interrupt again. Verse number 5, After that he poureth water into a basin, that's a bowl, and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Now, there is some symbolism that Jesus is doing and the answer that Jesus gives Peter. Now, Peter was an extremist, right? The pendulum swing for Peter was from here all the way over to here. Lord, don't wash my feet. Uh, I, you're not going to wash my feet. Jesus said, no, I have to wash my, your feet. If you, if you don't allow me to wash your feet, you don't have any part with me because of the symbol Jesus is trying to explain. Peter is an extremist. Oh, watch all of me. No, no, just your feet, Peter. Okay. So uh, the Bible says that Jesus girded himself with the towel. I am not Jesus. But to give you an example of what Jesus was doing, we just have a towel here. And uh, they would kind of put it like this around, like this. All right. Does that work? And then the Bible says the same towel he was girded with, he was using that to wipe and dry their feet off. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do this actually physically, but I have some hand soap here. And I did think about rubbing it all over his feet and then just wiping it dry. And then his feet would be sticky. But, but this is what... Did you take your, take your socks off? says he had like this basin which is kind of like a bowl. I imagine that bowl right underneath. 
then using a pitcher to pour the water on, and then wash his feet, and then take the towel that he had wrapped around himself, and using that to dry his feet off like that after he washed them. And that was washing his feet. Thank you, Brother Drew. Thank you. I asked him before the service if he'd be my, uh, be my helper. And uh, we're going to give him a dollar for helping. <laughs> That's what we do in junior church, right? Pick me, pick me. It increases the participation. And Jesus was using this also as an example and a symbol, the washing, the cleansing. The Bible says we're washed and cleansed, washed with the water of the word. So this was symbolic of several things. It was symbolic of the humility of Jesus. If you read in the book of, of Philippians chapter number 2, it talks about the humbling of Jesus, how that Jesus Christ humbled himself. Jesus had told the disciples when they were arguing about who was going to be first in the kingdom of heaven, he said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So he wanted them to see the importance of humility. Jesus humbled himself. Jesus was not above doing and being a servant. So important. And I hope for all of us when it comes to a church setting or it comes to your home setting or it comes to where you work, that you're willing to be a servant. It doesn't matter what your position is, that you're willing to have the humility of Christ and be a servant. But there's more to it than just that. Jesus was using another picture of what it meant to be saved. And the Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. When we are saved, the Bible tells us that we are washed. Jesus was using another symbolism to show the disciples what it meant to have the blood of Jesus applied to your life and how Jesus Christ, his blood, washes away your sin. If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Now, I'll be honest, I'll be open, and uh, you could explain it to me at some point, and I'd uh, listen in a willing way. But I know some churches, they're really big on this, and they do this on a regular basis. And I know some churches that do this once a month, uh, where feet are washed uh, at church. I'm not against that. I think it's a beautiful thing, and maybe we're missing something when we don't do this. And I know some folks that they do it uh, once a year as a special service, where the pastor washes the deacon's feet. I've seen our deacon's feet. Pray for me, okay? And I'm not opposed to that. But I wanted us to understand when somebody's talking about washing feet or the washing of feet, what the custom was dates way back, long before even the children of Israel were a nation. And it was a custom hospitality it was done as a way to welcome and refresh people I think the Psalm 23 kind of intimates it as well but then Jesus did it for a different reason to show humility to show that he's a servant and to show that the servant is not above the master and also to show a picture of salvation and how that Jesus was physically washing their feet and washing that dirt and grime off but it wouldn't be long before Jesus Christ and his blood would wash their sin away. Isn't that a beautiful thing?